let's move on to Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. So Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, it is also called as lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma because the morphology of this lymph, uh, uh, um, uh, plasma cell dyscrasia is going to have lymphocytes, plasma cells and lymphoplasmacytic cells. So that is why this name of lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma is given to this Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. So as the name suggests, macroglobulinemia, meaning some large kind of globulin. So which is the largest immunoglobulin which we see? It is IG. GM, right? It is a pentamer, largest immunoglobulin with um, largest molecular weight as well. So, it uh, here in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, it is going to be elevation of IgM. So, in pl plasma cell, uh, sorry, in multiple myeloma, it was IgG and IgA, which were more than IgM, right? So, M protein, don't confuse in multiple myeloma, M protein doesn't stand for M. M protein usually stands for IgG or IgA in multiple myeloma, while in mul uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, as the name suggests here, here the uh, abnormal protein, which is abnormal immunoglobulin, which is produces the uh, elevated IgM levels. Okay, so the monoclonal IgM levels are there. So IgM is known for causing hyperviscosity. So being a pentamer, it can lead to lots of this hyperviscosity. And because of this hyperviscosity only, we are going to develop multiple symptoms. Okay, so coming to the genetics, usually here again, uh, the patient is going to be elderly age group, but they usually don't have any bone lytic lesion or amyloidosis. Okay, so uh, as such, the light chain ratio to heavy chain ratio is going to be equal. So, they are not going to as such produce any renal failure as well because there is no excess of unpaired uh, light chains which are going to deposit in the uh, kidney and cause failure. So, the renal failure is also not so common in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia but it is associated with cryoglobulinemia. So, very very important. So, IgM is going to be associated with cryoglobulinemia. So, when cry cryoglobulinemia is there, if you remember when we were uh, in kidney, this cryoglobulinemia can result in a, nephro a nephrotic syndrome, especially MPGN. Okay, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. So, MPGN kind of presentation can be seen in a uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia because it is going to lead to cryoglobulinemia. So, one other thing here is this IgM can, uh, one thing is it is going to cause hyperviscosity. So, whenever hyperviscosity is there, you will have lots of thrombosis. Stasis will be there. So, lots of thrombosis. So, thrombotic kind of complications can be there in this. Apart from that, there is going to be IgM is going to be associated with cold agglutinin disease. Remember in RBCC we saw it is going to be associated with cold IHA. The first type of cold IHA was cold agglutinin disease which is going to be mediated by the IgM. So, the, wherever IgM is going to be elevated, again, it is going to be associated with this cold IHA. So, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So, Waldenstrom's, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia is going to be associated with cold uh, uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So, the, here again I mentioned there is not going to be any end organ damage. So, the rena, uh, CRAB criteria is not going to be fulfilled like that of a multiple myeloma. So, CRAB criteria is going to be negative. So, that is why there is no bone light lesion, no renal failure, no anemia, right? So, no hypercalcemia. Sir. But here the patients usually have hepatosplenomegaly. So, hepatosplenomegaly usually does not, uh, we, we do not see it in multiple myeloma usually. So, in Waldenstrom's microglobulinemia, you are going to see hepatosplenomegaly, but CRAB criteria is going to be negative over here. So, in the bone marrow biopsy, if you see what will be the microscopy. So, as the name suggests, it is going to have lymphocytes, plasma cells. Apart from that, lymphoplasmacytic cells are going to be present. Okay. So, the genetics involved in Waldenstrom's macroglobinibia, again, it is important. It is mid-88 mutation. So, this again has been asked in MCQs before. So, mid-88 mutation is kind of specific for uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobinibia. Okay. So, M for M. So, Waldenstrom's macroglobinia, there is an M here. So, IgM is going to be elevated and then you are going to have mid-88 mutation. So, mid-88 is the mutation which we see in Waldenstrom's macroglobinia. Moving on to heavy chain disease. So, it uh, the heavy chains can be produced in excess and they can cause disease. So, that is termed as uh, heavy chain disease. So, we have two types of heavy chain disease, alpha heavy chain disease and gamma heavy chain disease. So, they are, they are given some proper uh, names. So, alpha heavy chain disease is going to be called as the seligman disease. Seligman disease, while gamma he heavy chain disease is going to be called as Franklin disease. So, they can come as direct one-liners. 
So alpha heavy chain disease is going to be associated with GI and respiratory tract involvement while this uh, gamma heavy chain disease is usually involving the Waldeyer's ring here and that uh, because of that it is going to lead to palatal edema and that can become an emergency. It is going to cause respiratory compromise.